morning. It's actually not morning. It is 1.30 p.m. Welcome back to Yakology. My name is Denny. I'm your professor. Class is in session. That sounded really Belfast. And I'm, you know what? I was going to say sorry, but I'm not because this is who I am now. Kind of, not really. But also, look at how good my hair looks. Thank you. Check in. Audio visual. Audio, you got the dirty love. Oh my god! You got the. D <laughs> You've got the. D <laughs> You've got the dirty love by Florence and the Machine and Dizzy Rascal. Oh my god, this song. Guys, this song. I'm so serious when I say life changing. Actually, I'm being really serious right now. It's, let me find the version of it that I've been listening to because I think it's like a live performance, but I can't find any other version of it. Okay. And do you know what? It's really good. So I love it. You all need to go and listen to it right now. Right now, pause the video, go listen to it. Then come back to me. And visual, do you know what I've been re-watching? House of Anubis. And I know that not a lot of people are actually going to know what I'm talking about. But those of you that do, because no show impacted me more than that one did. I regularly quote this show and nobody knows what I'm on about. WWVBD, what would Victoria Beckham do? Like, hello? This episode is also dedicated to the girls that developed hips early and thought that there was something wrong with them because I, with you, pain. I feel that pain. And it was pain. Like, see, yes, this is actually serious. Those that develop hips early, I love you. There is nothing wrong with you. You're beautiful and amazing. And those that develop hips early are also now shown that their hips don't lie. So, thank you, Shakira. I leveled up. I do Pilates, right? And my doctor told me to start doing this Pilates. And I just do it off of YouTube because nobody, well, actually so many people, but not me. I'm not spending my hard-earned wage in this cost of living crisis on Reformer Pilates. As much as I would love to, it is so expensive and it's just not within my budget. So what do I do? Make do with what I have. And what I have is a living room with a TV in it that I can put YouTube on. So we do YouTube Pilates. The one I love, her name is Move, Move with Nicole. Well, her name is Nicole and her channel is Move with Nicole. Love you. I literally tried to use like a different one and I was like, this is not good. I miss Nicole. So I only use hers and at the moment I started doing like just the basic level one because it was for my back injury to build up like strength so that I can just be a normal human. Right? Are you with me? Good. Um, and I started getting kind of good at it. So I was like, do you know what? I'm going to try an intermediate level one. Tell me why I got my fucking booty kicked. Like actually, I still did it, but not very well. I did it to the best of my ability which apparently is at a very basic level for Pilates. But I'm still gonna keep trying. I'm gonna try and like pepper in a intermediate, so I do it like four times a week. I aim to do it four times a week, sometimes only three, but I'm gonna try and do an intermediate one once a week and then eventually just build up to all intermediate ones. But oh my God, I'm so sore and I've never been shaking after a Pilates lesson from YouTube other than last night when I did this one. I used to be on the reformers as well. I used to do reformer Pilates, but I did like this like 30 day challenge and I counted it as my cat's project for school because I did the international baccalaureate. So you have to do like this thing called CAS, which is creativity, activity and service. And tell me why this is like a pass fail subject, but it is so time consuming. You just either do it or you don't. And if you don't do it, you don't get your diploma. Anyway, um, the, so for my activity one, I did a 30 day Pilates challenge. <laughs> yes, I did that. And you would do a tool for a check. I was an employee. Anyway, I got fucking jacked from it though. Like I remember being like 
huge. Actually, on the subject of my school, we had, because I went to like a creative arts school, right? This might blow some people's minds. I know that there's a good chunk of my viewers that aren't actually from Australia. Um, in Australian schools, and I don't know what it's like for schools all over the world, but I don't know that you all do this. So I'm going to talk about it. And you know what? If it's not relatable, I'm sorry. Okay? I'm doing my best here. And that's what matters. In Australia, in our schools, we do... You do... There's like three kind of carnival things... So you would do a cross country, which is where you like run forever, um, swimming carnival, and then a sports carnival, which you just do like javelin and discus and whatever that, like what's the shot put? I was not good at any of them. I remember I got disqualified from almost every single sport in one of my primary school ones. And I went home crying because I just kept doing like m null throws. So they kicked me out. And I remember I went home and I cried to my mom. I was like, you think they would give me another go, but they did it. And yeah, it was a very upsetting day for little Danny. Um, but naturally, as I, the last three years of school, I went to an art school. And the thing about creative people, not a lot of us enjoy sports. And that's fine. But when you're trying to work out like sporting carnivals for creative people it becomes a bit of a head scratch actually so what we did for our swimming carnival is the big competition was synchronized swimming and tell me why this was like my calling i loved teaching people stupid little dances anyway so one of the things that i did i think this must have been in it was in year 11, maybe, or year 12. Um, I taught everyone the hoedown throwdown. <laughs> so I remember teaching my whole year level and the year below us, the hoedown throwdown. And it was brilliant. And it was honestly like the highlight of my high school career. I can't think of anything else that topped it. I did go on assembly with pink hair, which is a big like controversy. But do you know what? I did it. Country five and hip hop, but put your honk in the sky, move side to side, jump to the left, stick it, glide. And then cross, you still had people doing like the normal, like swimming, like those that wished to. And then we had like, you'd get them like blow up dolphins and blow up whales, and you'd have a whale wee way waist. <laughs> the whale wee way waist. <laughs> That was actually a sport competition that we did at school. I don't remember whatever. We didn't have a sports day, I don't think. I'm pretty sure they like just took us to the park and you had like a picnic. It was like a reflection day or something. I don't remember what it was. And then cross country. I remember I came first in cross country in year 12. And that is the first time that I had won like an actual ribbon from school. And I'm pretty sure that's still actually in my cupboard back in Australia. I'm moving on actually to something that kind of pisses me off. I saw an advert for cereal the other day and I was like looking through the comments because I get so paranoid about ads. Like I see them and I'm like, I feel like you are scamming me. So I go through the comments just to see kind of what everyone else is saying. Um, and then it was an ad for cereal and someone in the comments goes, oh, I'm so glad I can finally enjoy cereal without the guilt. What the fuck do you mean? It's cereal? Cereal is not a guilty pleasure food. Why would you feel guilty after eating a bowl of cereal? I'm being so serious. Why would you feel guilty after eating a bowl of cereal? That pissed me off. This is the same sort of level that I felt pissed off about um, this woman eating tuna sandwich on the fucking plane. Oh my God. I can't think about that actually. Let me breathe. I need to breathe. I need to breathe. Oh, I just believe that people saying things about like, oh, I can now enjoy this without the guilt should shut the fuck up. Like, what do you feel the need to like comment that on social media? Like piss off. Actually something else I feel really strongly about this do you know this popped into my head many months ago and I've not been able to stop thinking about it. I really badly need to be a celebrity guest on MasterChef. 
and I'm being so serious when I tell you this like actually I genuinely think that this is something that needs to happen because of the way that this has popped into my head because and I know exactly what like the challenge would be I don't know if the celebrity guests get to like pick it but I have decided so I'm gluten-free and dairy-free and do you know how many good cooks don't know how the fuck to cook for allergies well that's what the that's what the challenge is going to be on my episode of MasterChef when it happens. It will happen. I promise you it will happen. Um, I'm going to be like, well, cook me something gluten-free and dairy-free that doesn't taste like fucking shit. Speaking of something that's gluten-free and dairy-free that tastes like fucking shit, I just had a vegan gluten-free cheesecake and it got served to me room temperature. And I was just like, that cheesecake should be cold. I believe very firmly that cheesecake should be served cold. And I feel like that is a pretty widespread belief. Like I feel like quite a few people would back me up on that. And this cheesecake was like, it was bordering on warm and it didn't taste of anything. And I understand this is like, let me preface this by saying I also understand that it is difficult to make things such as cheesecake where the primary ingredient is supposed to be dairy and some dairy alternatives just really aren't that great. So you would think that because you're making a cheesecake out of stuff that essentially tastes like nothing, maybe put like a flavor or chocolate or something that makes it not taste like nothing, like berries, some kind of fruit perhaps but they did not. It was just supposed to be a vanilla cheesecake, but it didn't even taste like vanilla. It was just a cheesecake, a warm cheesecake. Not the good kind either. <sighs> I'm sick of having no options. Do you know what I mean? I like to graze. I like to look at the whole picnic and decide, hmm, I want that, that, and that. And when restaurants literally have maybe one gluten-free and dairy-free option or one thing that can be made gluten-free and dairy-free it's just like like what went through your mind when you made this menu because you all suck actually that's all I have to say actually I think I'm done yapping for the day so thank you for watching class dismissed